Hello, welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. Electric vehicle manufacturers are hiking prices of e-scooters after the government's fame subsidies cut comes into effect from today. The costs are expected to rise anywhere between 10,000 rupees to 40,000 rupees. And this comes as companies expect to incur subsidy losses ranging from 10,000 to 60,000 rupees. As per the government notification, subsidies have been cut down from 15% of... Uh, to 15% of the vehicle cost from its earlier 40%. This cutback means a loss for manufacturers and a few of them are passing on the cost to customers while some of them are passing on partial cost to customers. The companies that have announced price hikes include Bajaj Auto, Aether Energy and Greaves Cotton. Electric scooter brand Aether said that the company clocked more than 15,000 unit sales in the month of March and this has led to a more than 300% jump year on year. To take this forward, I'm joined by Ravneet Fokela, Chief Business Officer at Aether Energy. Ravneet, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, revised prices from Aether Energy as well. Give us a sense of the quantum of hike that you had to resort to and what has been the subsidy loss per scooter. Right. Thanks for having me here, Parishit. Uh, so uh, the subsidy loss that we have per unit is about 32,000 uh, rupees. Now, uh, well... The easiest scenario would have been to pass the entire thing on to customers. Uh, not a prudent thing to do. So what we've done is we've looked at the portfolio. We've decided to absorb some part of it in our own financials and the rest we have to pass on. And instead of taking a blanket uh, number across uh, all products, we've, we've looked at each product individually, looked at our profitability per product and see how much we can absorb. So as a result of that, uh, we, we uh, our flagship product, the 450X for the Pro Pack, uh, that goes up by about 7,000 bucks, uh, which actually essentially at that price point is really no price increase. It's essentially the same price. Uh, well, theoretically increases, but there is very, very low price sensitivity there. And for the other product that we have, that's gone up about 25, 30,000. So <clears throat> different price points, uh, different levels of absorption of, uh, of hit, but overall not a big change from where we are. Okay. So you're saying that uh, a total loss of subsidy would be around 32,000 rupees at this juncture. Yes, per unit. Like I said, we didn't pass on the entire thing to customers. Some we've absorbed and some we've added to the uh, to the price of the vehicle. Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you, uh, you also had to bundle the cost of the charger in the scooter's price. What has been the loss on account of that, Ravneet? And it's just not, not just Aether. There are at least four to five electric two-wheeler manufacturers who have had to do that. <clears throat> yes, so uh, so this was uh, uh, part of the longest uh, conversation we had with with the government, where uh, we sort of as a as a group as an OEM group we uh, we agreed to bundle the charger uh, not just going forward uh, but also retrospectively for customers who had bought the vehicles in the last uh, few years that we we've been selling. So the total hit uh, for us uh, is is to the order of between one forty and one fifty crores. Uh, which we'll have to sort of reimburse to our customers for uh, for the charger price that they've paid. At different points in time, the charger price has been different. So this is a collective sort of a big number across all the all the products that we've sold. Right. Uh, Ravdi, what I was actually coming to, you've seen that you're saying that the subsidy hit per scooter is around 32,000. You've also had to bundle the cost of the charger uh, in the scooter price going forward. Taking both these factors into account, what would be the total loss per scooter that uh, you would have to account for? See, Parish, the, 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 the loss is seen, is seen in context of the price that we managed to command in the market, right? Uh, because whatever I, I can add to the price, that's the offsets against the, the loss that I have. So that remains to be seen because we are taking a differential hit across different products and what the blended would be would be based on the on the mix between the two products that we have. In one, we have a bigger hit. The other, we have a smaller hit. And, and the final number will be based on what, what sales we actually have by way of percentages, right? So difficult for me to, 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 um, uh, to comment on that. On the, on the charger side, uh, it's less about bundling the cost of the charger. Uh, it's more about the opportunity cost of not being able to price it uh, and get revenue from there, which is a, which is a bigger hit. Uh, but we'll give us a uh, you know four to six weeks for us to understand how the market sort of pans out now, to truly understand the hit. Theoretically, we know the numbers, but the market may tell us different things. 
Right. So you're saying that the revenue uh, loss per scooter is something that you would probably be able to give a sense of a little later. But 140 crores is what you have to return to customers, Ravneet. What is the timeline within which this is going to be returned? And for a company, for a startup like Ather, how big a hit is it when it comes to working capital, when it comes to operations, when it comes to uh, investments this year? How does this really set you back? So it's an unplanned cost, Prachi. It's not a small number. Uh, but equally, it's not a number that fundamentally changes the business direction or, uh, or our plans, right? So it does not impact our growth plans. It does not impact our product plans. It doesn't impact any scale-up that we plan for. So, uh, you know, there are there are unplanned hits that you get. Uh, this time it was a charger cost, but it could have been something else. Who knows? So, uh, you know, you absorb it and you sort of work your, you know, your short-term financials around that. Uh, working capital and a bunch of other things. So the but the important thing for us is that while we sort of manage the the short term, uh, you know, and absorb this uh, this hit, uh, it uh, it has not impacted our our, our fundamental plans uh, at any level, right? So we you know if I if I take not a six month view, but if I take a let's say twelve to eighteen month view, we probably end up in the same place eighteen months from now as we would have otherwise, right? So no long term impact, short term hit of course. Mm. Now in terms of timeline. Uh, timeline essentially is a function of how quickly we are able to operationally sort of uh, return the money because we're talking about what I lack customers and contracting them, getting the, the bank details and then the process of refund, etc. So that takes whatever time it takes. So we've started the process. Uh, I, my hunch is it'll take about six months or so but we'll be able to sort of uh, at least cover a majority of our customers. But, uh, but really the limitation is the operational challenge of getting it done more than anything else. Hmm. Right. Uh, of course, it's a logistical challenge. You have to contact so many customers, make sure they are paid back. Uh, also, now, on account of the subsidy cut and also the rev revenue loss because of uh, the charger issue, the bundling of the charger, Ravneet, uh, what impact do you think will this have on your production? What impact do you think will it have in on demand in the market because you've had to raise prices to some extent and how will that impact demand over the next few months? So I think because the uh, the prices have gone up across the board because it's an industry phenomenon, it's not a brand phenomenon, um, it's slightly easier for the market to accept and absorb changes like this when it cuts across uh, multiple OEMs, right? So there's going to be a, a certainly a short-term hit uh, maybe a couple of months or so till, and not because suddenly the products become so expensive that they've, they're have they out of range now. Uh, it's more a market sentiment. Prices go up, you know, go up. People take time to absorb it, recalibrate that. The minds, what the price value equation of a product is, etc. Uh, but uh, in the in the medium term and beyond, I don't see this changing things dramatically. Uh, we may see a two, three month hit where, or maybe four month hit where volumes may come down. But even there, I don't, I don't uh, expect volumes to come down dramatically, maybe 15, 20 percent, uh, hmm. but not beyond that. All right. Uh, so you're saying that uh, the volumes will uh, drop, but not significantly. And this drop will be seen over the next few months. Uh, thanks, Ravneet, for joining us. We've run out of time. But thank you for giving us a perspective on the changes that we're seeing in the EV ecosystem and how they impact Aether Energy. Let's look at uh, the other big player in the electric ecosystem, Ola Electric, which has reported record sales of over 35,000 units in May. And this boosted the company's market share to over 30%. To discuss that and more, we're now joined by Anshul Khandelwal, Chief Marketing and Revenue Officer at Ola Electric. Uh, Anshul, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, give us a sense of the revised prices uh, from Ola Electric and what kind of a price increase did you have to resort to? What was the exact subsidy loss per scooter? Sure. Uh, thanks, Parikshit, for having me here. Uh, uh, very excited about, you know, what's what's in store for the industry. And before I answer your question, I think one thing which I really wanted to um, talk about is uh, what we are seeing uh, in the last uh, couple of months, despite all the ups and downs through fame subsidies and regulations, etc., is that the end ice age in scooters is really happening and and you know i was just looking at some data I, there are cities like bangalore surat ahmedabad rajkot nagpur kolapur belga where the ev penetration of scooters is 50 percent and i myself was surprised when i looked at that one out of every two scooters sold is right now ev which is counter to what 
people typically think of as, which is the overall penetration is 5-7%. But when you look at scooters and you look at specific cities which matter, the penetration has gone up to 50%. So end ice age is really happening and that's the first thing which we and I personally are very, very excited about. Second, our dominance and continued and increased dominance in the segment. And you've seen the numbers for the last three quarters uh, from uh, 27,000 in March to 30,000 in April to 35,000 in May now um, with uh, more than 30% market share right. and 300,000 plus scooters on the road. We are very excited about our growth trajectory. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, as far as subsidies are concerned, uh, I think it's a part of a uh, longer game. Uh, in short term, none of these hiccups matter. They, we feel there are bumps. Of course, there has been a subsidy loss, including our products, anywhere between twenty-five to 35000 for us, uh, for both the products. But I think our cost structures due to our vertically integrated supply chain, our manufacturing excellence, the components which we manufacture in-house, which is more than 60% of the value of our scooters. Uh, for example, we started making our motor in-house, and we're very excited about that. I think all of this has really uh, put us in a spot where we don't really need to bother about these hiccups, and we're very confident that uh, you know our cost structures are so solid that these hiccups will not matter. As far as price increases are concerned, we had to increase okay. the price of our two scooters as of now by 15,000 rupees from 115 to uh, uh, 130 for S1 and from 125 to 140 for S1 Pro. Mm. Even with these price increases, they are the most affordable and the most value scooters in the market right now as compared to competition. And we are fairly confident that uh, the price increases is not something which consumer is too bothered about. And in a matter of uh, a week or two, we should be back right. on the trajectory. And we're pretty much back to our launch price, <laughs> for, uh, you know, coincidentally uh, for S1 Pro after one and a half years, which is uh, okay. 139 triple nine. All right, Anshul, so you're telling us about a 15,000 rupee price hike, which has taken place on an average across your model range. But uh, let me ask you the, the same question. We're trying to get a sense from other OEMs. The charger issue. Uh, Ola and other companies, they were TVS Motor Company, Hero Motor Corp, Aether. They were asked to bundle the cost of the charger in the overall cost of the vehicle rather than charging for it and accounting for it separately. On mm -hmm. account of doing this, uh, what kind of a loss... Uh, have you had to take per per scooter? What kind of a revenue loss has have you had to take? So not at a per scooter level, but like we uh, uh, like we said, it's it's roughly around one twenty to one thirty crores is what um, you know uh, is is the amount of money we would be refunding to the customers over a period of time, um, and and this is a very uh, short term hiccup, and we work with the government, and of course. Uh, ensure that is it is in the best interest of the consumers. Uh, we've already started the process of charger refund. It will take its due course of time to finish all the consumers and reaching out to them. Um, and yeah, we have not, uh, we we're really doing whatever is required uh, to reach out to them to refund this money. And we see it as a very small blip in, um, in, in, in what is otherwise a very large uh, mission for us. So not really very perturbed about it. Okay, so you're not uh, very perturbed about it, but uh, give us a sense of how this is going to impact your working capital. 130 crores is what you have to return to customers. By when would you be able to do that? And does this, in a way, curtail your product rollout plans for this year or curtail manufacturing in any way? No, I don't think if we were to be affected by uh, this amount, we would not have been the uh, leaders in the industry. And I think more than that, that, that that's just, I'm just sort of uh, taking it a uh, light tone. But the whole idea is that, you know, we are actually, in fact, expanding our manufacturing capacity from 0.5 million to uh, 2 million right now. We are in the process of, in the anticipation of the new products that we are launching. And I just wanted to talk about that also a little bit. Finally, S1 Air is launching in July at a price, introductory price of 109999 with a top speed of 90 kilometers per hour and um, uh, a range of 125. We believe at this price, this product is really going to end the ice age and, and really will be a game changer in the industry. Um, we were a little late to launch this, but we are working through our engineering to make sure that the product is absolutely solid. We are ready to launch it in July, and that's what we are. And for the other set of products that we are going to launch in due course is why we are expanding our manufacturing capacity, in fact. So we are, in fact, in a more expanding mode right now right. and very excited about S1 Air, which is uh, going to be out there in, in, in the next few weeks. So, so Anshul, 
All right. So, Anshul, one point that I want to understand that 15,000 is the price increase that you've announced right now. The overall subsidy loss per products is in the range of 32 to 35,000 rupees. Are you going to, to increase prices yeah. further? Possible? Yeah, 25 to 35,000 is the subsidy loss. You've increased prices by 15,000. Could there be more price increases in order to, uh, to account for uh, this loss? No, not really. See, we have a very open and transparent end-to-end -end pricing. We don't have a staggered pricing from a base to a, uh, another add-on on top of it and an, another add-on on top of it. We're very clear with our price that we have right now. Um, we don't foresee any further price increase as such given given the confidence we have in our cost structures. Uh, of course, something uh, unless something really uh, you know uh, something happens which which forces us to do it, but we don't foresee it at this point in time. We are very confident of it um, of our prices right now, and we believe that this is the right price in the market for us to um, win the market share and increase the market share in the next couple of months. Final final set of questions, uh, Anshul. First, April 2024. Uh, most the way things are going right now, I think the government is giving a lot of signals that the fame may not continue beyond March 2024. Uh, even though the final issue will be decided towards the end of the year, if the subsidies are removed altogether, even if you lose 15 percent per uh, scooter as the subsidy uh, completely, if this goes completely. Won't you be forced to increase prices even further? Will that impact uh, adoption if there are no subsidies support uh, at all? I, I'm so glad that you asked this question. In fact, we started talking about, uh, you know, living in a post-fame world and preparing ourselves for it from a technology, engineering, innovation, manufacturing point of view one, one and a half years back. So we are, in fact, extremely ready for it. We, in fact, believe that we cannot, you know, continue to rely on government with, with FAME 3 for subsidies. I think the industry, like everyone else, is also saying has to grow on its own feet. And we believe with people who have already innovated, who are building their engineering solutions and core technologies in-house, are the ones who are going to be able to build the cost structures to survive this. And we are, in fact, excited about it because we really have uh, been working very hard on it. And you'll see once that happens as to you know what kind of efficiencies and cost structures we have built which will allow us to uh, price the product in a very very affordable manner in fact we would want the prices to probably be more affordable in the future uh, that's our goal uh, our goal is not to increase the price our goal is very simple our goal is to increase the penetration and end the ich for that whatever is required if it means reduction of cost by working hard on engineering and manufacturing we will do that and and that's our goal and and yeah broadly that all right, Anshul, thank you. We've run out of time, uh, but uh, thanks for joining us, giving us a sense of how this impacts the industry. But of course, uh, within the industry, there is a concern that this will impact revenues, this will impact bottom lines, and the path to profitability does get longer as well. And let's not forget, less working capital available for day-to-day -day operations as well. But of course, there are some companies who are bullish on the ecosystem. Let's see how things pan out for EVs in the months to come. We're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. More news and updates on the other side.